Good afternoon. Uh, muy buenas tardes desde Dios uh, y de la justicia. Y, um, mi nombre es David García. Uh, yo soy uh, de, la, de la comunidad de San Antonio del Guache que queda en, uh, en el pueblo de Wingue, uh, en el norte de Nuevo México. Such an honor to be here today talking about sekyas, talking about, um, I, I, I came to school here at UNM as an undergrad, and uh, yeah, I started off in the music uh, department, and I ended up uh, back home in the sekya. And so, uh, I'm gonna open the, the, today's uh, talk with a song that has taken me a lot of places. And I'll talk about it in, in Uh, you guys all have a copy of it. It's called La Canción de las Acequias. Uh, it's a song that I started off uh, as a, a collaboration. It's a song that I've sung at people's uh, burials. Uh, uh, and that probably is probably the most moving time, you know, when someone said, that song represents my, my father. He finally can sing it at, at the funeral. And, uh, and so uh, this is a song that's taken me to probably hundreds of Seca meetings. Mm -hmm. And so it was uh, collaboratively written by uh, uh, Roger Montoya. Uh, and hopefully we'll have, add some more names before if we have some youth that are uh, that uh, and, and you know we have the power well, to, to add some more verses to this. So it is that's what I say. Ya viene amaneciendo Yo sigo trabajando Para mantener Lo que yo quiero tanto Para mantener Lo que yo quiero tanto
yes. Well, thank you and for coming to, to this talk today. Um, I know that the title is, uh, you know, somewhat, uh, uh, I still have to kind of, I think, describe everything that's in this title. <laughs> I don't know what if I do. What I do is singing, <laughs> or está así pues, uh, I'll explain probably every single one of these words up here. Because um, in many ways, it, it, it identifies me, and sometimes it doesn't. And so, uh, this song, Cancion de las Acequias, like I said, probably about 2003, 2004, Roger Montoya was working with a, a, a group of um, a youth in the Española Valley in Oque Wingue um, to do a uh, choreographed dance of, the, of an acequia clean. And so, he invited me to participate to to collaborate in terms of putting music together. And in many ways, thinking about, as a musician uh, of the community, how do we you know, transform our music that we have in our community that is, you know, that is uh, shared and that is traditional? And how do we, uh, you, know, uh, you know, as going back to, uh, uh, you know, uh, um, the Beatles don't make a sad song, make it better, no? Sing a sad song, make it better. <laughs> Uh, is looking at, um, you know, the, the tune of this song comes from a song called Ya Viene Amaneciendo. It's a very uh, a popular canción, ranchera. And uh, we were interested in many ways looking at different uh, song texts that were circulated in our community that dealt with substance abuse, with, uh, you know, uh, dealt with uh, violence. And, uh, you know, and, and we wanted to see how can we flip those narratives within those songs. Maybe keep the melodies. And like many ways, you, the idea was to flip the script and, uh, think, and think about how the, the letras that we were going to uh, interpret for that, that, that tune, that tonada, uh, would uh, affirm some deep cultural, uh, cultural values that our communities held. And one of them, you know, uh, central to that is the, you know, our, the importance of water. Uh, in, in our valley, you know, without water, uh, the, the typical um, adage that people say is, you guys can tell me, agua es vida. Agua es vida, and uh, without water we wouldn't be here. Um, and um, and so, the in terms of working with Ro Roger Montoya and Ciprano Vigil, uh, they, they focused on seeing how each one of these verses could 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 form uh, somewhat of a, a Weekly, uh, a focal point for a weekly, weekly curriculum that the students would learn about the acequia through the acequia cleaning and also you know throughout the year. And so in many ways, how do we codify you know uh, community knowledge into song? Uh, and so um, so I'll kind of move kind of move along. i tell you a little bit about myself. Uh, my first job uh, as a young person was uh, as a peon on the Aceque de los Calasandes, which exists out in Oque Wingue. There's a particular uh, event that happens every spring that's called uh, the annual cleaning of the Aceque. They call it the, if it's a really bad year, they say it's a uh, a saca, because you're taking, you're cleaning out the, the irrigation canal, of all the, the dirt is filled in, or the tree has fallen, you're just, it's sacando tierra de, de la zanja. And uh, if it's a very light year and there's just leaves and stuff, you're doing a limpia. And so it's a particular community practice that, uh, that in many ways, it's a rite of passage in terms of becoming a, 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 a community member. It's a something that is uh, expected of uh, your participation is expected in, in, in being there you now in terms of your family is expected to send someone to represent your family whether it be and so in many ways the, the kind of like the you know as you're a young person you know um, you know uh, dr. Eric Romero has talked about it you know Sometimes you know you're conceived as someone that doesn't have a juicio, someone that doesn't you're a bocosito, you have you know bocos hanging out, and uh, but but once you get a little bit older, you you can 
you can go participate as a peon. Some uh, some um, um, uh, you know, and it's part of what the uh, in terms of a, a community work day, which is called a techio. It's a term that uh, is shared by not all all Sekia communities, but it is a it's a it's a it's a communal work day uh, that um, in order to you know it's for your family to get water and share within the particular uh, co uh, commons of the, of the water source, you do have to send. Uh, Remember it. So, in terms of sending, uh, you know, a young person or someone that uh, is, it's a it's a particular practice that uh, the Sekia Canal is probably like uh, sometimes they're very very thin. Sometimes they're very where I grew up. It's about about uh, eight feet across, and they usually would have someone that would walk the the ditch and mark off uh, the, the the work. Uh, the work task, and they call them tareas. And so usually a work task would be from for one person, maybe from right here to right here. That'd be what someone would say, uh, you know, someone would mark off a, a barra. And uh, there would be a person in front of you working and a person behind you. And so in many ways, thinking about you don't do anything in the community by yourself. Uh, as the, the, you know, the, 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 the peon is in front of you and the peon is behind you, you work as a team. And in many ways, creating a, you know a sense of, uh, of, uh, of, of, of listening to what uh, you know. If you're you're green behind the ears, you have to listen to the, to the people that are in many ways uh, um, that are, are veterans. Because sometimes there's people in there in, in working that day that they don't have young people. That are to the same job. And I when I you know when I, um, when I was young, you know it was a sense of. The person in front of me was, you know, in their 60s or 70s. Now I just think they were so old, you know. <laughs> and the person behind me was in their 40s. And, uh, you know, the, the person in front of me was a, an elder from the community. The person behind me was an immigrant who had come to, to work in the United States. And so here, in terms of thinking about two, two particular uh, Spanish dialects that are, in many ways, trying to uh, uh, instruct, you know, this, this, this person that doesn't know what they're doing so that the team can, in many ways, finish the, the tarea, complete it, so that the, the foreman can, the mayordomo can, the, can go in and say, you can take a break. And that was what, in many ways, is, in a sense, is that we can finish the work, that way we can take a, a moment of respite, sit down, take five. And in those, in that, in those the, the moments of respite is a many times very important part in terms of thinking about um, that work is in, in many ways is, is about you know having that sense of commonality in those times of the word not working. The the Cancion de las Acequias has a kind of a dark end. Uh, the last verse says, Yo sigo trabajando para mantener lo que quiero cantando. And I was like, in many ways, when does that person have an opportunity to rest? And so I'm thinking about our parents, grandparents, and great-grandparents. Uh, that is, in many ways, a utopia that we look, look forward in terms of, 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 of futurity that we work for, in terms of that we, have, we, we work towards that, that they can somehow have a rest. And then maybe, as we work, we can have good work in our lives and be able to rest also. So, um, so keeping it with the sense of that, this is Aceca de los Salazares. And like I said, in San Antonio del Huache, and in many ways, growing up, a uh, thing that we, we share with a lot of our youth that we work with in the Mexico Asequia Association, it's not a sense that we have ownership of, of this particular uh, uh, Asequia common. Oftentimes, what we hear uh, a lot of our elders say when they say they belong to a, a community and they're members, they say, pertenezco a la sequia de, uh, de, de, de la Rinal, pertenezco a la sequia de... Are there any Asequias here? ¿Dónde pertenezco usted? Hablamos de los gallegos. Que viven las acequias, no? So, uh, it's, they literally, we belong to the acequia. It's our mother. Uh, it's our, uh, it's our, it's our, it's, it's the reason for us having uh, sustenance. And in many ways, thinking about it in, 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 in times when uh, families would be, you know, displaced, oftentimes they would be cut off from the acequia. Basically, if you're cut off from the acequia, you're, it's almost like you're banished, you're, 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 you're relegated to, to death. So when you say, Aguas Vida, 
that's what the importance of you know that the continued not necessarily metaphor but the continued importance of how water is in our communities and so uh, so um La Canción de las Acecas from Children's Theater to State Capitol. And like I said, um, uh, when, when I first, uh, in like 2000, 2003, we got, um, we did this uh, uh, children's um, dance that was choreographed, the choreographed dance of the Acecas. In 2003, we were asked to participate in the annual Congress of the Acecas and take this as, uh, it was uh, the, lunch, the lunchtime entertainment. <laughs> And uh, the youth, you know, they danced, they learned all, uh, all the, you know, the particular uh, weekly, we had them uh, clean trash out of the acequia, we had them uh, learn about uh, seed saving, we had them learn about, uh, um, you know, uh, language arts in terms of thinking about how important the affirmation of language in terms of uh, our, uh, uh, the song itself in many ways, uh, Affirms uh, particular terms, whether it be bordo, uh, knowing what uh, semillas de, de frijol, maíz, y chile are, knowing what uh, a bordo is, uh, you know, having these types of uh, you know, uh, of understandings of, of what the acequia was. Um, to we got invited to uh, the, con the congreso, and after that, we um, the the entire group got invited to various acequia meetings. Because uh, at the annual congress of the Asequias, uh, up until today, uh, we know that there's possibly uh, around approximately about 700 uh, 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 community Asequias. There's a lot more uh, 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 individual uh, uh, lateral uh, Asequias throughout the state. But in many ways, thinking about you know, uh, 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 community Asequia is recognized within the state uh, as a political subdivision of the state. It has a, a governing body with uh, three commissioners that are voted in, and a uh, officer, which is uh, Margoma or Margomo, who uh, is kind of like the, the, the daily manager. Um, so um, here is uh, this first photograph. I think it's, 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 uh, we took some of the students uh, to do a cleaning uh, at uh, Seca de los Vigiles in, in Española. At the, on the northern campus, as a matter of fact, I think uh, it, Northern has a campus that has an acequia. Um, um, so subsequently, after those, you know, 2003, um, you know, the, the children went on to different grades, levels, and, but they continued to ask the musicians to, and, and I, I, I would always say yes, in many ways, to, to attend these meetings. Uh, I started working with the Mexico Acequia Association around that time. Uh, helping, uh, assisting uh, Asequias with uh, updating their bylaws. Uh, a lot of times, uh, Asequias uh, you know, uh, have their, uh, their rules and regulations codified. Uh, uh, for the last hundred years, uh, some of it, some of our uh, bylaws, you know, they go back to our state uh, territorial laws uh, in terms of uh, when um, when the United States um, uh, you know, took uh, New Mexico uh, to. Uh, to the war of aggression in 1846, and those you know, those early territorial law books. In terms of there was a lot of uh, 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 people making sure that the secular laws in that were customary became uh, part of uh, state territorial law. So some of those early uh, uh, secular um, uh, reglas y regulaciones are in Spanish. Uh, one of the first things that they, the New Mexico Second Association asked me to do is, can I do a translation of, of the bylaws template so that people could continue doing their, uh, their, 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 their reglas and regulaciones in Spanish. Um, since then, we've kind of, you know, there's been a, 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 a noticeable shift to English language in terms of uh, rule of the bylaws, uh, in terms of my, my work. But in many ways, I you think about um, how do you, um, and in terms of my work as an anthropologist uh, and how it connects with bylaws, is I, I as, a, as an organization, we focus on affirming uh, custom on particular acequias. If what the practices they're doing are not somehow documented, we try to see how we can document them in their, in their, in their, in their bylaws. 
so that they will have a, a, a way to, you know, uh, if they need to, uh, uh, if there's an issue, uh, with, with, uh, conflict on the, on, the, on, on the acequia or in between uh, neighboring acequias, that they can demonstrate that they've been doing that particular practice for, 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 for various years and uh, through custom, uh, customary uh, governance. And so, um, tip, probably around 2000, 2005, 2006, uh, we've been going, going to so many different uh, sequias with this Cancion de las Acequias. Um, uh, NMAA you know, started saying, this is our, 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 our anthem. Uh, this was a, a particular uh, you know, uh, a movement song that uh, we, every time we would go and do marches, we would, uh, this is uh, us at the, at the roundhouse. I believe this was in 2019, um, uh, and uh, and uh, it's a particular song that has meant a lot to a lot of people. Uh, like I said, one of the um, uh, most moving things that uh, I got asked to was for one of the parshantes in this, in, in uh, Chamita area asked me to sing it for his father's funeral as they were lowering down the casket, and um, and that in many ways means a, a sense that the community. Um, this part of the community is, you know, that that they're listening to the words, they're you know affirming you know what the, what's being said. From in many ways, uh, a particular song that was meant for children, you know, has a has more uh, uh, a circulation within the community. And so um, I'm going to move on. But today, what I'm going to do is is uh, share you know a couple of the, the, the my practice of, of doing music. Um, for me, as an anthropologist, music is is not what I study. It's the instrument that I that I encounter community with. And so, one of the practices I think about that oftentimes um, in New Mexico, um, uh, you know, uh, there's a if, if you've ever heard a, you know someone sing a, either Chicano Chicano music, Mexican American music, um, you know, corridos or canciones. One particular practice is, is singing in parallel thirds. Uh, you know, sometimes when people are singing uh, for birthdays, no, las mañanitas. Uh, esta sol, esta sol, las mañanitas. It's having those two different voices. And one of the things that I I, I, I look at my work is 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 not trying to 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 voice the the what the primera voz is doing. Is in many ways, my purpose is to dar segunda is to follow along and maybe in a different place, but to complement what uh, the, the, the community members are, are saying. And in many ways, that's what I see my practice of, as a musician and as a composer is, and in many ways as an anthropologist, is, 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 is complementing and affirming what a, the particular community members are, are saying about uh, their, their particular community values. And so I, I take that metaphor from music as a musical practice, you know, dando segunda, and I, I, I find it very uh, meaningful. Um, and so, uh, and I, I, I go back to this other form um, of, of learning about doing music, uh, which I, uh, Facundo Valdez, the late Facundo Valdez, was a teacher of mine. He was part of La Academia de la Nueva Raza. Uh, he was a longtime uh, sociologist. He taught at uh, at Highlands, and uh, he uh, worked uh, as a social worker throughout uh, uh, Colorado um, and New Mexico, uh, and worked in union organizing. He uh, uh, was an avid uh, historian, uh, community scholar, uh, and one of the things he taught me in terms of as I was attending these meetings, he said. He was also a board member of, and founding member of the New Mexico Seque Association. <coughs> was that that it's important to start a meeting with song, mm -hmm. and also end a meeting with song, and that in many ways it, it gives a sense of that there's cohesion in terms of what people are. The purpose of a meeting, in terms of, is to, to get together to to work uh, and figuring out, you know. There's conflicts, figuring those things out. Um, and so he, he, he had this idea, the sense of, he said, Me enseñaron a cantar con una guitarra desafinada. He used to say, this, he used to say, desto nada. And so uh, he taught me, as, and he was talking about, you know, a former uh, uh, university professor from here, his name was Tomas Atencio. He said, Tomas Atencio used to, you know, 
they would get together and sing, but uh, sometimes the guitar was always out of tune. And he said, I'm going to quote him. And he said, when I was young, I had a beautiful voice. <laughs> but when I started getting together with my friends, they always had an out of tune guitar. <laughs> and I liked hanging out with my friends so much, and we did a lot of great things together. I had to learn how to sing out of tune. <laughs> <laughs> and he would explain it. No, he would say, in many ways, that the communities that we work with are different. You know, their voices and their articulations are 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 not going to be. Uh, there's there's cultural difference. There's difference in how do you sing along when there's still difference. And in terms of many ways, thinking about uh, 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 not erasing difference, but in many ways uh, uh, singing along and thinking of the idea of segunda is is kind of complementary to this idea is that uh, you know because um, oftentimes you know uh, if, if if there's someone's I, I've noticed this in terms of I, I've um, um, uh, I played um, like, uh, as as, as uh, Dr. said I, I've I've been playing matachinas for about 27 years now and early on uh, there was a uh, two violinists that used to get together. And um, somewhat a, of a conflict that emerged between them. It was this is in the community of Alcalde in Mexico. The following year, one of the violinists decided to tune their violin differently. <laughs> so that the other violinist, you know, it was in many ways a, as a practice to see what was the other violinist going to do? <laughs> were they going to continue coming? <laughs> or were they going to decide that they couldn't handle the dissonance? And sadly, it was a sense that these two violinists went their separate ways. And strangely enough, the first year that I learned how to, I, I shared this story earlier on in the class. Uh, um, uh, the, the, when I first learned how to play with matachines, the violin, the matachines, um, I went to Oke Wuke Pueblo, and there was a, 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 a neighboring community that came to dance matachines for Dia de la Virgen in, 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 at the church. And I got near the musician, and he said, do you have a violin? Are you interested in, the, in learning the violin? Do you have a violin? And I said, yes. He says, we're about to start. Could you go bring your violin? I said, I live about 20 minutes away. I live on the side of the side of the river. Go we'll get it. <laughs> so I went and brought my violin. They were already halfway through the dance. It was about the dance lasts for about an hour. Um, he stopped the dance. He tuned up my violin. He said, "Play along with me." <laughs> and I, I didn't know how to play violin, <laughs> and I just followed along the best I could. And then that lasted for 27 years. <laughs> but little did I know. The conflict that I had just talked to you about had happened the year before, about two years before, where the other violinists had left. <coughs> so I had learned how to, mind you, I told you, he tuned my violin. <laughs> uh, so uh, he, um, the next year, the, 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 the people who were in Gagal of the, of the, of the danza, called on the other violinist that was left out there. And so they, and so, but I wanted to play. I said, I came back the next year. I said, I want to play again. He says, oh, there's a different violinist. So I went and learned how to play with the other violinist. <laughs> and so, consequently, I started playing with both violinists, uh, you know, uh, shifting, learning both, both uh, styles of, of playing. And it was funny because you know I incorporated a lot of the stuff that the, the violins that the tune is a violin different with the, the violins that didn't want to play with. After many years, like ten years, he says, "I like the way you play." <laughs> <laughs> and I think it, it was kind of a sense of like uh, it took a generation to uh, or another, um, but in many ways thinking about how do we how do we work together. These are some metaphors that I take from music about how we work together. Uh, and so going back to this, you know, um, Facundo um, 
you know, in many ways cap uh, encapsulated that with that idea of enseñaron a cantar con una guitarra desafinada, is that many ways, as we work with communities that are not in many ways uh, uh, attuned to our particular sensibilities, we have to adapt mm -hmm. and, and learn their tune. So, and I think that's also true in a lot of <coughs> communities that play Son Arocho. Uh, you go to the community, you can't show up there with a tuner, and mm -hmm. you have to listen mm -hmm. and learn. And so, uh, so I wanted to kind of talk about Facundo. Uh, oh, I only had to. Talking a little bit about Antropolocura, one of my uh, um, uh, academic uh, colleagues, best friends, uh, Aime uh, Villarreal, who's, at, uh, who's in Texas. Uh, we were thinking about how in many ways uh, anthropology is, is not a, a structure that, that is, that, uh, that is a, a place where we can really hold knowledge within uh, from, in terms of a Chicana, uh, Chicana, Chicana perspective, in many ways it's not our house. In many ways it's been a, a, a space that has looked at the field as, you know, as, as, as cultural other. Um, in many ways, how in many ways does it make a, a difference when you're studying among your hometown? Not that you're studying yourself, because there's still a lot of difference between you your hometown diversity within my town. And so in many ways, if you think about this idea about uh, anthropos, uh, you know, people, study, uh, but not necessarily uh, of knowledge, but in terms of locura, uh, this idea that um, uh, that it's, um, and it also if you probably got the, the title of the, the, the talk is, there's a, there's a teacher says, de musico, poeta y loco, todos tenemos un poco. You know? uh, but this idea of uh, of an anthropology of descent, of anthropology that is standing in many ways outside the building. It's not, you know, in many ways welcomed in the halls of anthropology. Uh, we, uh, here in New Mexico, we have a, a long history of, of, of anthropology uh, uh, of, of, uh, um, in terms of, uh, you know, uh, uh, that came with, 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 with the conquest of New Mexico. <coughs> And in many ways, it pitted in many ways the idea is that the people that knew it most about New Mexico were not. And so, uh, the I, the idea of Antropolocura is is in that knows that that people from the community are not seen as as uh, as knowledge bearers, are not seen as uh, in many ways. Uh, and so the idea is that also there's there's a there's a sense of curación in this, is that um, in terms of thinking about. Um, we, we were, when we started talking about this 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 this, this topic, I mean, I mean, we were talking about the School of American Research in Santa Fe and its foundation, uh, that, and, and in many ways, that um, that the laboratory of anthropology, uh, these spaces, in many ways, we were in many ways always other. We weren't invited to you know, participate. In, spaces of, of, of academic inquiry and and whether it be like in the sense of like Española we've always been seen as a uh, Espanol Valley okay we get uh, capital we get. we've seen that been seen as a, a labor force to go work uh, in, in, in these spaces but not any ways, have any sort of knowledge of these spaces uh, and so in terms of thinking about a laboratory where is our laboratory where is our space of inquiry uh, and in so many ways, thinking about uh, um, uh, other spaces um, um, that, uh, that that they kind of move towards uh, 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 identifying and affirming uh, uh, cultural institutions that uh, that uh, that we can think of as uh, you know institutions of learning. And whether and for me, it's that Sankia in terms of as a as a space of learning. And so, like I said, it's like there says double commitments. Challenging emotion in work, unsettling critical dilemmas, it's a lot of that. So, uh, uh, like I talked about a little bit about Matachines, uh, kind of my first work in, in terms of uh, uh, doing uh, music in the community was participating in a theater that was uh, it was called the Sangre de Soberiches. Uh, professor, um, um, Dr. Uh, 
Teresa Cordova, uh, who taught here, uh, is the director of this group now. Uh, I was a part, a part uh, uh, participant back in, in uh, 1997 through probably around 2005 uh, in, the, in this Pastorela. So I, I grew up in Pastorelas, you know, uh, uh, having the devil be a, a very <laughs> present person in my, in my, in my, in my month of December, and so uh, uh, um, here's some pictures of the Matachines from uh, Alcalde, uh, um, and I'll kind of go on to kind of talk about these three palas here, in terms of this this kind of next section, which I'll probably end with. Uh, I brought these three palas, uh, which are. Uh, representations, or not representations, they are uh, images of santos. Um, uh, two years ago, um, there was a particular uh, tradition in our communities which is taking the saints out into the, to, to mark out ritual space, sacred space around a community. Um, and uh, we would hear a lot of um, you know, uh, farmers and, 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 and teachers and educators talk about that that they used to take out San Isidro to, to, to bless the fields, to ask for, for petitions for rain, for ask for, for good crops, and that they know that people weren't doing it anymore. Uh, and so uh, I talked to uh, uh, Santero Charlie Cabillo, and he said, and I basically when I first asked him, I said, I, I want a, an image of San Isidro, that we have a something that we could take out into our proces, procesiones, that we take into our marches, that could be our, our banner. Uh, and that the, I think the most significant thing is on the tool that is most symbolic for, for, for our community members, uh, which is a pala. And he said, oh, I got, the, I got a good story, but it has to be three palas, and I'll tell you why. He says, there's three palas in, the, in our lives. There's the pala that the the partera, who back in the day when they would uh, 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 assist with childbirth, yes, would take the, the placenta, the afterbirth, and bury it. Mm -hmm. It was an angelito who died in, 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 in childbirth. They would dig out the, 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 the passageway in the doorway. He died in a very liminal space, it'd be in the Marco de la Puerta. And so, uh, the second pala is the pala of the, of the campesino, the pala of the, the acequero, the pala of the peon. And the you know, pa santo patron of the, of the peones is San Isidro. Uh, the third pala is, is in many ways something that I uh, uh, have participated in the last probably five years as a community musician and playing for weeks. Uh, doing, uh, oftentimes uh, people will call, say, can you play a mass for so-and-so, uh, my, my brother, my sister, and my mother, um, and we'll go play the, 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 the funeral mass. But then, that's not the end of it. Sometimes you go from ritual music to secular music, and you play all the songs at, in, at, at the burial that that person remembers. Uh, you know, sometimes it's un puño de tierra, no, a handful of dirt. And and so Charlie says the third one is a particular practice in our communities that that is important in terms of thinking about uh, mutual aid. Is when all the people of, of your family and your community come to bury you and they dig out the, the, the cemetery. And they, nowadays we have tractors and stuff like that, but it's, it's still a very important practice to be able to bury someone. And usually a lot of families, and I as a witness, in terms of singing, uh, we do uh, bury a lot of our, our family members. And uh, people take their, their palas, because that's what, that's the work they want to do that day. And so, so those are the three palas that Charlie, you know, he mentioned the same. And so, in San Isidro there's three, particular uh, 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 personages. There's San Isidro, and he did something very interesting. He did one of a youthful San Isidro. Mm -hmm. San Isidro, he is old. Uh, the Angel, 
Santa Maria la Cabeza. And sometimes in our community, they've called her, uh, as we've taken out, uh, San Inez del Campo. So in terms of thinking about uh, uh, of reviving a particular tradition, going back to you know my, my work as working with um, Auto Sacramentales of the, the Pastorelas, the Macachines, Los Comanches, we looked at it in terms of thinking about what would be uh, a revisioning of, uh, of doing a colloquio uh, for San Isidro that, that we could um, share with, 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 with communities so that they could re, uh, 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 revive their tradition of, of taking up the, the Santo. And so this was a. Um, I'm going to just share a couple little bit of the music that I, that I composed for it. There is a, a traditional alabao, alabanza that is sung for San Isidro, but for this particular, um, uh, and I'll tell you a little bit about San Isidro. No? And, uh, I'll sing the, 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 the first one. Um, and I'll tell you a little bit about San Isidro before we, we end the day. I'll, I'll, I'll probably promise we'll end like in about five minutes. Oh, I almost forgot there's one critical character in the San Isidro uh, 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 miracle stories, which is Ed Way. <laughs> so, uh, in one of the miracle stories, uh, you know, San Isidro, um, uh, I'll tell you after this. <laughs> Procession around the field with that song, and then we would share uh, at each stop. We would do uh, uh, one of the. Uh, in many in many ways, this is a, a prayer, um, but I'm not going to get to all of it. But you know, the, the first miracle is um, you know um, is the idea that that there's a, a well, and that one of the the son of San Isidro falls into the well. And that uh, Santa Maria la Cabeza or, or uh, San Inés del Campo, they pray together, and the water gushes out of the out of the well, and the sun is saved, floating on top of the water. The second miracle story uh, about San Isidro that is shared uh, when we do these processions is about his patron. Uh, we, uh, historically, we know San Isidro perhaps was uh, a peon uh, for the. Uh, in the, kind of the Madrid area, uh, I think that's where his uh, uh, names are, and then uh, Santa Maria de Cabeza. And that uh, there's a connection to the Vargas family that, uh, um, and throughout Latin America, uh, San Isidro was you know, uh, circulated, the story of San Isidro was circulated. Um, and so, in many ways, um, the second uh, miracle, the, the miracle story is told. Uh, is that the patron is out on the out in the field, far far away from the river, and kind of to like, you know, the patron to make pasar la vida pesada a San Isidro, pide una, un vaso de agua, so that San Isidro has to walk all the way to the river, and San Isidro doesn't. He knows the well, the land so well, and he has faith, <clears throat> much like Moses. He gets his 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 bourbon and he strikes the earth, and a well gushes forth water. 
and, 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 and so in many ways he subverts the patron, but he, the patron gets his water, but he's, uh, the, third, the third miracle is the one that's probably most uh, famously known here in New Mexico, is where San Isidro um, uh, is not doing very well uh, with, his, with his farming, and um, he's having all sorts of problems with bad neighbors, he's having all sorts of problems with locusts, he's having all sorts of problems with, with all, all, all sorts of plagues. And so an angel says, why don't you attend Mass? And, um, and uh, he, he attends Mass, and all of a sudden that there's a, there's a, a way and an angel out there doing his work for him. I have to always wonder, think about these things. Who, who's doing the work of San Isidro? Um, but an angel's doing his work, and he comes back, and he's like, "Wow, the fields are are are, are, are verdant. There, there's there's life, and uh, there's so much uh, 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 things, so much cosecha." No? So he decides to go the next day. So San Isidro goes back to, to mass the next day, and uh, he um, the same thing. He starts, he goes for the entire week. And so he, so he doesn't have to work. After a week passes, his neighbors are mad because he's not sharing any of it. And so what he learns is that in order to, to, to have a good community, there's, a, there's an importance of working together with the community and sharing the cosecha. And so it's a many ways a lesson that you know uh, that our blessings that we have uh, you know, many times therefore the way I understand it they, you can understand a lot of things from these things is that uh, the blessings that we have are for us to give to other people but also like in the first sense you know when you gave the patron so we shouldn't you know do it on 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 on, on, on the credit and so. Um, that's, that's in many ways, uh, we did this colloquio, we, we've done it now for, this will be the third year, that we've, uh, we've gone to a lot of um, ranches and uh, we've uh, participated, we've met a lot of people doing this, um, we get to share songs, when we get back to the, you know, the house uh, or the, you know, wherever we, we gather for a, a meal, uh, and it's in many ways thinking about uh, um, looking at traditions that or even reviving or reinterpreting traditions so that there's a focus on people getting together and, uh, and, and a focus on mutual aid uh, and affirming those particular things. Sometimes in a sense of like, um, um, uh, in Chimayo, a, a field that hadn't been planted for over 50 years, uh, the community got together and we planted it all together. Um, uh, quickly, I'll just go through this in terms of uh, and thinking about there's a, 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 a calendar year that in many ways there's various uh, points in time where different uh, um, uh, different celebrations uh, happen. You know whether it be Dia de San Juan, uh, Dia de San Antonio, Dia de San Isidro, Dia de la Santa Cruz. Uh, are, are, we're in a, a period of frost right now. Um, it's also I want to finally um, just invite everyone. Quickly. Is this past, this, this 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 coming weekend we have our Congreso de las Acequias, which over uh, you know three hundred um, um, people uh, attend uh, annually, and uh, that are Acequia leaders. We'd like to invite any of you that be interested in uh, in attending, and learning more about Acequias and how to to help out uh, as a priority. How helping out? We, we appreciate. Uh, is there any questions? I know I didn't get into the piazza too much, but I'd be happy to ask you other questions. For the, <coughs> excuse me. Thank you for this wonderful talk. I I, I really like the concept of, of the anthropologura, particularly the emphasis on the cura, that is the, the rehabilitation, the cure, the 
the revival of some sort of ancient traditions. But my question to you was that why you focus so much on the religious ideology of the Catholic Church as the Cura. That is, because you started out by critiquing anthropology as of all of these foreigners coming to tell us how it should be done in New Mexico, or what the history and nature of the culture was, and yet you revert to Spanish Catholicism uh, as as the as the ritual form for you end with the whole idea of mutual aid and rehabilitation and things of that sort. So I was curious about the middle portion there, uh, the Spanish Catholicism as the as the as the core, or at least it, I wasn't sure how you how, yeah. how you perceive it in relationship to the Cura. I think it's a very important question, and I think it's going back to anthropological Cura. It's the ethical dilemma. In many ways, the language that the community speaks, and in terms of giving segunda, oftentimes the the particular practices that, uh, you know, in many ways that uh, somehow are, in many ways, perhaps parallel to Catholicism, that are not necessarily all, all but not necessarily all, you know, they may have arrived and there's a particular sense of syncretism that exists in many ways in many communities. I wouldn't uh, venture to say that they are, that a lot of these practices are solely Catholic, uh, Catholic. And so, um, Matter of fact, in many ways, like the Matachines and other, through my, 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 we've had a lot of antagonistic uh, uh, impasses with the church uh, you know, um, in terms of uh, these practices, uh, you know, um, you know, priests not uh, recognizing them or not giving, them, giving the community uh, ample enough time to, 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 to have their celebrations. Uh, and oftentimes that's a, I think the, the like I said, it's a, it's a critical impasse because it's like in many ways the church gets credit for it, but in many ways it's a practice of the community that is using language and ideology and in many ways symbology, sim symbols that are, that in many ways came with, with colonization. And so I don't have an easy answer to that, but I think in many ways, um, in, in thinking about, in reflect, in, in, and also thinking about New Mexico as a space of multiple uh, uh, colonizations, uh, oftentimes um, certain things function as resistance, but they're only resistant in, in, in a particular way to American colonization, but not to how, in many ways, indigenous communities view these particular uh, these uh, practices. Just following up on that, uh, because my question was also in connection to this term and this concept and this methodology. And by the way, thank you so much for this presentation. It was amazing and beautiful. Uh, and the not not uh, so much as Dr. Gutierrez. Um, emphasis in the cura, but uh, I want to ask about the locura, mm -hmm. the madness, and the madness as connected to uh, the definition that you had there, um, it said that the locura is critical discovery and madness, right? Mm -hmm. And um, as tied to uh, a series of things, and one of them was challenging the emotional work. So I would love to hear more about um, yeah this this notion because I, I mean as a professional level I could understand that and following what what um, Dr. Ramon was saying um, that uh, anthropological fields can look at this method as locura right but if you're also using this as your method I wonder how that locura is embraced by by you by uh, by me but by by these people who who you are representing um, in connection to um, challenging emotional work and settling ethical, ethical dilemmas. Yeah. In many ways, one of the things that uh, I accompanied Aime in, in some work that she was doing with uh, a community of, um, uh, in Santa Fe, of uh, 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 charismatic Catholics. And in one of the things, you know, it's a sense of like, um, one of the locutors that we were talking in the conversation, I said, 
in many of the things that you know in terms of working with the idea that that you're somehow allying yourself with this community as you work with them you in many ways have to renounce academia as the devil no uh, uh, but but at the same time in many ways thinking about there's a there's a particular cuento of pedro de malas and Pedro de Malas is a, is a trickster character that, that in heaven, they don't want him because he's singing songs, songs that aren't, aren't, don't belong to him. And in hell, he's singing alabados or which necessarily don't belong there. And so in many ways, I think that's a sense of the locura that, uh, that we somehow, in many ways, that, that, that sense of difference that we don't, that it's important to sing, going back to, to um, uh, uh, Facundo Valdez's idea, cantar de esta, con una guitarra de esta nada. And, and that's in many sense of that, in, in that our audience is many ways, um, um, it's important to sing nevertheless, uh, because oftentimes the, the, the inverse would be not to sing, and to silence our voices in terms of trying to figure out a space to in, to have inquiry, and whether it be a, a particular to to utilize the languages that we do know, and we have a, a deep uh, uh, sensibility about, and we see how far in many ways that that those particular uh, 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 notions are, or. Uh, places of imagination can, can occur in, in, in those spaces that we're necessarily singing, you know, uh, alabanzas to, to the, to the, to the, to the demonios, no? I uh, appreciate your work, and especially your work with Sefia and with the um, I do want to share that I, I was involved with a project to recover a colonial church in Belen, New Mexico. And archaeologists come from three different universities outside the UNM. They finished their excavation and I invited David to come over and do a despedida because they had the, the huesos the, the, the antepasados. They had in boxes and they were taken to Santa Fe for safekeeping and study. I invited David to come and I told him, I come and sing a song. Well, he showed up with his guitar, but he also showed up with his paila. <laughs> and he ended up doing. You know, his canción, but the, you know, he really, a lot of the community came for that event, and he really touched, touched a lot of people because in Berlin, they're kind of separated from, from northern New Mexico where they don't have some of the same traditions, or some of the old traditions, I should say. So he, in a sense, brought these northern New Mexico traditions to Berlin, New Mexico. And so some of the people are just elated that they, they haven't heard them song, those songs since they were children. So he really touched the lives of a lot of people there. You know? But at the end, you know, the archaeologists that I brought in, and, and uh, being an anthropologist himself, they ended up putting us to work to fill in the back holes of, the, of their, their excavation units. And we happily did it because because we did it. We didn't do it for them. We did it to, why did we do it for them? The smell of dirt, you know, it's just, but uh, we ended up, he ended up using his shovel then, again for, 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 uh, for burying on this uh, archaeological site. So it's just like the juxt juxtaposition of his, all his work as an anthropologist, as a, as a community uh, person, community uh, uh, liaison, I guess. Uh, you know, it was just nice to see all that come together at that, at that moment, at this event that was important to a lot of people. Don't share that. Um, I, I like your story about the, the I, I guess the fighting violinists and how you know you said it took a generation to kind of I don't, don't want to say mend it but you know mend it in that sense. Um, and so my question is is kind of about that. Do you see more interaction, more um, like ganas in the youth to? Be doing this kind of work, or communal, or um, mutual aid work, that kind of that kind of stuff. Or do you think it's kind of dying away? Um, it's a difficult question, right? Um, as you know, as uh, as we go into the schools and we talk about these particular issues about the acequia, um, it's comforting that a lot of the youth have these 
have these backgrounds, and they'll they're, they they're able to articulate them in some of the classrooms. I mean, youth. I mean, they're like my dad butchers. I mean, say or uh, they, they they talk about you know particular farming practices that they have, and that in many ways even being there to affirm that sort of knowledge within the classroom, and classrooms in many ways that looking at how. Um, there's a particular project that, that NMA is, is working with. Um, um, uh, it's called the uh, Sekian Land Grant uh, Education, um, and so um, project along with uh, land grant studies uh, here at UNM and the Highlands. And uh, one of the things is is, is is important that that these sorts of topics don't that they, that they you know if I see access. Uh, Back here, a lot of people are doing work in terms of affirming land-based knowledges in the classroom. Uh, a lot of times, it's just, uh, like I said, you know, that, that there's uh, um, uh, not an affirmation of knowledges uh, within academic spaces, and they're just as important um, in, in terms of our, our, our sustenance and livelihood. Uh, and so, uh, uh, and so I think uh, as uh, Topics of acequias become more and more familiar with people. Um, you know, I think the, the youth will necessarily be uh, a little bit more open. And I think it's not that they, they're forgetting it; just in many ways, there's 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 negative attitudes about it. Still, one typically that uh, one of the things that the like, uh, generation goes to to tell us is that when they were growing up, they was either go to school or go to be a ditch digger. And so, in many ways, our work has been many ways to affirm that it's important to that the SEC is a laboratory just as much as the laboratory in a uh, science classroom here at, 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 at a major university. And it's something that's just uh, generally understood, but in many ways, thinking about that, um, that, uh, that we see textbooks. That affirm these languages as well. Rather than when I was growing up, I always wanted to have a, see have learn about all the names of all the trees that were around me and all the plants. And now I'm 45, and I still haven't learned. I'm barely like uh, that. So, uh, so that's something in terms of thinking about uh, does Agar in a textbook with. You know, can tell me how to properly identify uh, Umpino de Alcawi. So that's that's what that's for us to, 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 to see. Yes, Dr. Gutierrez. I, I, I wanted to push you a little bit <coughs> in that one of the really interesting parts of your talk was about the dissonance between the, the musicians. Um, and, and you might want to, to like theorize that more and use it as an audio point into into some of these conflicts and the way in which you describe social relations. Um, I think of, you know, Guillermo Gomez Peña with his, the border brujo, who's always entering into locuras. And so if, if you have the beginnings of it, and I just think it has to be developed a little more and made more powerful because you have the evidence as well. So it might be a, a direction to go, but that's just, you got it for free, so it, take it or leave it. <laughs> and and uh, the use of the pala is, uh, I mean, there are so many things that you can find about, I mean, the, the, the supposed noise and the percussion aspect. And, um, I mean, yes, I mean, there, there are so many things to say about the supposed dissonance or lack of pitch that accompanies the voice, you know, the singing mm -hmm. a cappella. Um, very, very powerful. Oh, I need to explain that part. I need to explain it real quick. So people would always ask me if I was going to sing a song a, ca a capella or a capella. And I said, no, yo voy a, ta uh, yo voy a cantar esta canción a capella. And I'm my show. Any other questions or comments for Dr. Garcia? Yes. Sí, tal vez si no tengo preguntas hoy sobre el teatro, porque no hice nada. Okay. Well, if you just real quick, right now we every year we do an annual uh, acto for for the, for the Congreso de las Acequias. This past couple of weeks we we've, we've been writing it, 
it's something that we do collaboratively with uh, secular leaders um, that have a dramatic <laughs> background. Uh, we have some, you know, very good uh, actors. It's uh, it's, a, it's a bilingual uh, aqua dealing with. Um, uh, this year we're, we're looking at um, you know, the effects of on, on, on habitat, wildlife. Uh, the main characters are, are, are truchas and how they how they experience the fire and the contamination. Of, system and, but it's it's it sounds serious but it's a lot of fun and a lot of it's a lot of like uh, uh, New Mexico jokings mm -hmm. and like you know a lot of um, so it, it, our, our director is Yolanda uh, Jaramillo uh, and she's a long time uh, theatrista that uh, has joined us um, and, uh, the main purpose of our, our theater is to raise consciousness about the issues that are affecting us again. We do have one video that we did during the pandemic, and it's called, uh, it's on YouTube, and it's called, um, I'll share that with you after this. So. Yeah. Well, thank you so very much, Dr. Garcia.